Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. Let's take a look at a video. Just like the Bible has no inherent meaning, it also has no inherent authority. The exact same argument can be applied to your PhD in theology. 100% accurate, as I myself have acknowledged on numerous occasions. I have never once claimed that any of my degrees grant me any degree of authority over anything. Your argument is that the Bible is essentially a social contract and that whatever people of the time decide is good or bad, you can read in the text and that it's used for that. That's your fucking PhD. Your PhD is essentially you gave people money, which is something you value and they value, which is a social contract. And then they told you, you need to learn X, Y, and Z and take these classes. And then you did those things, which is another social contract because you think that has value. They think that has value. Then they give you a piece of paper, which you think has value. They think has value. And it says that you're a doctor and that you have an authority and that you know things. So my degrees grant me absolutely no authority whatsoever over anyone. Uh, they are entirely and exclusively about qualification. They signal to others within this broader social institutional framework of higher education that I have successfully completed the tasks that have been agreed upon within that broader framework to be necessary in order to qualify for or be eligible for certain roles within that broader social institutional framework of higher education. And absolutely there is authority associated with that broader framework that is required in order to certify that I am qualified. So others might see an unaccredited degree and say they don't have the authority to grant that certification in a way that we are required to honor. But if the degree is from an accredited university, then yes, within that framework, that is an authority that is required to be honored by others participating within that framework. So there's absolutely authority as a social contract within that broader framework of higher education, but the degree itself grants me absolutely none. I would have to be put into a role that is associated with that authority in order to have any such authority, and the degree doesn't do any such thing whatsoever. So this is a pretty silly, uh, pretty naive caricature of what a degree is and how higher education works. But at the same time, you make TikTok videos where you say the Bible has no inherent meaning. When the story of Noah is a Hebrew poem which has a literal meaning in it because it is two inverted triangles. And the meaning of the poem is the middle line, which is, and God remembered Noah. No, the fact that you can identify a chiasm within the story as it has come down to us today is not a demonstration that it has inherent meaning, particularly in light of the fact that source critics have shown that it is cobbled together from a number of different sources, which would mean that the curator of that chiasm would be the last redactor who may not have had anything whatsoever to do with composing any of the text. So the meaning is always negotiated. The meaning is always something that we create in negotiation with the text. The meaning is never something that is inherent or native or innate to the text itself because that's a physical impossibility. Because the Bible is a fucking work of art. Well, it is a complex collection of works of art, and to the degree that one considers its final redaction to be artwork, that could also be said to be a work of art, but that would be the work of the final redactors, not the works of the actual authors and editors of the poetry and the narrative and the prophecy and the other genres themselves. But if you would like a wonderful discussion of how biblical poetry is artwork, uh, Robert Alter's book, The Art of Biblical Poetry, is a wonderful start. And you're trying to apply authority and all this dumb shit to literal art, which is stupid. That is a laughably uninformed and jejun caricature of what I do on social media. Also, I'm not a Christian, but if you did believe in God or if you were just going to argue in God's favor, any religious texts that have made it this far would be the ones you'd want to go with because God would make sure that his book made it to the end, wouldn't he? Not necessarily. That would be the logical like assumption you'd make? No. You could play the really fun game where you look at all world religions and you just notice the repeating patterns in all of them and you go, huh, it's almost as if the same God is popping up all over this fucking planet trying to communicate the exact same message of love and understanding. That's so weird. Well, that is something that someone who has never looked at world religions would come up with based on a very Protestant understanding of what religion is. But part of my doctoral dissertation was the cognitive science of religion, which actually does try to go look at what the repeating patterns in this thing we label religion are. And it is not the same God, not remotely. In fact, 
God is not even a necessary feature of the things that we label religion. And if you would like to learn more about this, I would highly recommend uh, Ara Noren Science Big Gods or Pascal Boyer's uh, The Fracture of an Illusion or William Cavanaugh's The Myth of Religious Violence. Or tell you what, I'll just put on the screen the bibliography from the class that I taught on what religion is, and you can go check out what you feel like checking out.